I'm going to tell you a story, all right? Um, I think it was 20, actually exactly 21 years ago, 1998, that I, we got a, a phone call. It was right after I finished my daily show it's, uh, at noon time, and uh, I finished my show, and there was a lady, a girl who, uh, a young woman, who called us to the studio, and she said she wants to speak to me. And I spoke to her, and she said, you must come and meet me. Please come and meet me in the place where she was getting treatment. At the same evening, I came to see her. It was she and her uh, psychologist. Uh, I saw a good-looking woman, but very, very, very sad woman. She told me, I need your help. Please help me put on trial my uncle, who had been raping me all my life from the age of four till 22. She was 32 at that time. And she tried to explain to me uh, the whole situation. I did, uh, uh, the main point was that she wanted to put him on trial, but the state didn't let her. The attorney, the attorney closed the case, and they said, you can't put him on trial. At that time, I didn't really understand why. I told her, OK, come to the studio. I'll record a, an interview with you. And she came with her therapist, with her psychologist, of course. And here we are, you can imagine, we're sitting here in the studio, and I'm uh, starting to talk to her, and I'm trying to start easy, and I said, tell me what happened after you made this big step to tell your family your big secret. What happened after that? And then she starts telling me that how was she, she was so disappointed and uh, with their reaction. Because what they said is, don't, don't say it again. Don't tell us again. Forget it. It's bad. Don't do it. And then actually threw her out of the family. They didn't want to speak to her anymore. She was so offended. She was so uh, uh, destroyed that she decided to go to the police. And she went to the police. And she told all her story. She succeeded telling her story. But when, the, when he came, when the whole story uh, came to the uh, attorney, they said, there will be no trial. And uh, I had to find out why. All right, so here she, here she is telling me uh, the, the beginning of the story about her family. And then I asked her, Oli, what did this uncle did to you? What did he do to you? When I asked that question, it took like a few seconds in which she turned to be a four years old girl, just the age when it all horrific things started, all right? Now she bent down underneath the table. Her figure in her, in her mouth, crying, I did nothing, I did nothing, I did nothing. And there she was, a four years old child. A minute before, she was a young lady. And she's four years old. Now, many of you are therapists. I'm sure you know what it is, right? A dissociation, you've seen it before. Many times, maybe. I've never seen it. For me, it was a shocking thing to see. And you know, uh, uh, the IDF radio station is, is uh, Galetza, is the radio of, of the army. Young soldiers served with, with me. Two soldiers sitting there and seeing all this scene. We were all shocked. Of course, the interview was finished by that time. And uh, her ther therapist told me, okay, give me a bed, a room with a bed. And it will take time, it will take a few, a few hours till I bring her back to her age, 32. And I went with him to see it. And it was a smart thing to do because I learned how to do it. And years after, I had to do it by myself. 
he uh, let her sleep, and then he walked her up, speak, spoke to her a little bit, and then let her sleep again. And it took like four hours till she came back and was 30, 32. I was so shocked because what I saw at that time, I realized I met for the first time of my life the horrific damage, the horrific psychological destruction that, is, that a sexual abuse can make. And I said, this is, this is, I have to tell you, although it sounds dramatic, this moment changed my life, I'm telling you. Because from that day on till now, like 21 years old, I'm dedicated to this issue. I'm dedica dedicated to, to, to this matter. I promised Ori, I will go with you all the way is, is, need, is needed. Because first to see the destruction, the horrific damage, and then on the other hand, to think that the, the, the monster who did it to her, because he did it so well, he could go. He can be, you know, free. He can live his life. She is a dead, dead walking woman. And he is a free man. This is unbearable. So I said to her, Oli, I'm with you. And we started going, doing, it's a long way. It took us 12 years. Sometimes when it was, when, it, when the whole journey raised an important thing, I invited her to, to my show and we talked a, a, a bit about it. But the main thing was um, going, escorting her through the way behind the scenes, not, nothing to do with my show. I went with her to the police, to psychiatrists who needed to assess her, to the attorneys, to wherever. And I saw so, so many things, really, uh, which was sad to see how our, how the institutions try to tell these victims what to do and how to do. And mainly, she wanted a trial. They always told her, forget it. It will be hard for you. You don't need it. Forget it. And, and leave it. Try to live your life. And she said, I can't live my life. I can't live like that, all right? But they closed the case again and again. She said, I can't live my life. So the attorney asked her, how did you live so far? <laughs> all these years, how did you live? So she said, so far, I repressed everything. I repressed it. So she said, go back repressing. Can you imagine an attorney in Israel? <laughs> go back repressing. So we were, I went with her, and at that time, I learned all the deficiencies, really, all, uh, in, in all kinds of ways, how the state fail in trying to really help these victims. And I, it, when people heard uh, only in my radio, there came so many others. And the others brought uh, and others, and others, and others, and others, so many stories about sexual abuse in childhood. But the door stayed, the doors cl stayed closed. So we decided, all and me, to go to the state attor attorney in the uh, um, Institute of uh, Justice, uh, 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 to, meet, to meet the attorney, the state attorney, and speak to her. At that time, Edna Bell, the Israelis of you, you know Edna Bell, uh, was the state attorney. She, when I called her up and I said, this is, you know, this is, a, uh, this is the power, being in the media, this is the power. When you call, when you want to speak somebody, it can be the prime minister or any other minister, he will meet you, all right? So she said, okay, come. And we came, and I told her the, the vague story, and uh, she said, okay, let's try it. Let's try. I will interrogate you as if we are in court. Okay, only okay. And and now Bell is starting asking her questions. I think it took not more than two minutes that we lost her. We didn't have Ollie. She became four years ago, four years old girl again, right in front of Mrs. Abel eyes and all the other stuff. All right. And she said, "You you you, you see, there is no trial." And I said. How come what you see now is not an evidence? This is not proof 
of what she have suffered. She said, no, in the trial, in the court, you need a witness that will tell the story. Not only telling the story, but in details, all the details that is possible. No way. So I asked them to get me a bed. I put Oli to sleep and took me like three or four hours to bring her back. I did it so many times in all the uh, steps where I went with her. When we went out there and I told Oli the, the very sad thing that there will be no trial, she said, please take me to television. I want the people of Israel to see what is happening to me. So they will decide if I deserve a trial or not. I want, you invite, she told me what to do. You invite Ed Darbell to your show. I had at that time, I had this show on television, like 60 minutes, something like that. 60 minutes, something like that, all right? <laughs> <laughs> and I invite, so invite Ed Darbell and me. You shoot me before that. You film what, what is happening to me and show it to her and to the Israeli audience. And I said, all right, we'll do it. So I took the, the camera and the crew. We went to Oli's house and I started interviewing her. I knew exactly how to make it so she will become four years old. I interviewed her. Everything is being filmed, all right? And, it come, and there is the day of the recording of, of the show. I sp on the show, I speak to Oli and I ask her, why is it so important to you? They close the case. They don't go to, to trial. Why is it so important to you? She said, I can't live without it. I'd rather die. She was a married woman with two little children. She said, I'd rather die. I can't live like that anymore. And then Edna Bell is on screen. And I'm telling her, why don't you uh, let her put him on trial? She said, we can't. So I said, all right, I want to show you, we have it, right? I, wait a minute. <laughs> I want to show you, you can start, you can start. I want to show you, I want to show you these pictures and with you, all the Israeli crowd, viewers, are seeing what you are seeing now. And I'm telling my audience, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to look at. But do, do look at it. You and Edna Arbel together. Nobody has seen such things in the Israeli screen, never. I was sad all the time. Sad and afraid. Afraid and then afraid and ashamed and blaming myself. Afraid, everything, million times. It's too much for a child, isn't it? Everything was in force, by force. And then I became like a rag. And with the rag, you could do whatever you want. So, so he, he did just did what he wanted with me. That's it. I, cu I couldn't, I, I didn't have the this, this strength to do it. I really tried hard. I resisted it. My body resisted it. My, my hand were closed all the time. <clears throat> like a snail. That, so that you can't take them. Because he takes your hands to do things to him. Yes. She's gonna disappear. Here it comes. Oli, let's stop. Let's stop. No, no, no. I did. I did do nothing. Oli, are you with? Are you with me? I did hear one moment, please. Oli, where are you? Here she is, four years old girl. This is it. What is this? Do you know? You are in your home, do you know? You are in your home and with the kids, your, your children. You don't recall, you don't, re you don't know it. I did nothing, I did nothing. 
אוקיי, אתה יכול שנייה להדליק את האור. עדנה ארבל הגיבה, עדנה ארבל had to respond to this. Yes. Yes. I must tell you my dilemma, and I'm here to speak about dilemmas, right? To screen what you just saw, for me, was impossible, unbearable. Because, you know, this is such a, a horrific thing to, to, to see and to show other people. Only have never seen herself like this. She didn't know what is happening to her, but she knew that something terrible is happening to her, and this is what, uh, 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 this is what uh, not allowed her uh, to go on trial. And she wanted to ask to see it. And I said, can she really understand what it means going to the street a day after? What it means, such an exposure? But she insisted on it. And you, you could have seen that I said, Oli, shall we stop? Because she told me, don't stop. You shoot it all the time, whatever you need it, all right? OK. Now, after that, Edna Bell, you see, she's speaking again. And she's saying to me, there will be no trial. We need the witness for a trial. And when, then when she stepped out of the studio, she grabbed my hand and she told me, please give me a few more days. Give me a few more days. This was a big hope. It took her a month to come back to me and tell me there will be a trial. I cried. <laughs> I could cry now, again. I want to remind you, the Israeli audience will know. And now she told me, days after she told me, this was my hardest um, uh, decisions I've ever taken in my career. The most difficult decision I've ever taken in my career. And you have to remember, Edna Bell was uh, this, uh, the state, uh, I'm losing my, my words. Uh, no, no. <laughs> I'm no, 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 She had to, to decide whether to put on trial Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and she told me this decision was harder because this decision meant to decide on a trial when you don't have a, when you don't have a witness, and it was a really a big uh, legal uh, precedent. and it made the whole change. It was very important. Well, don't be so. Uh, uh, I'm losing my my words. What happened? To me? I'm excited. <laughs> okay, don't be so happy. It took us eight hours. The trial lasted eight hours till I was there with my, with the camera again, and uh, I heard the judge saying that this man is guilty and he is going to jail, and he went to jail for eight years, and he died there. He died, yeah, and he died, died there in jail. And um, what he did to Orly, you can't imagine. She got strength you could never uh, believe. And what is she is doing now? She uh, she constructed a non-profit uh, organization. I'm in it. I'm one of. I'm in the head of the organization. We give treatment to sexually abused uh, men and, and, and women for almost nothing, for almost no pain. Just, it, it's all tumult. And um, all over the country, for hundreds, almost now we're getting to thousands of people, she's organizing it. She is organized, she's the head of it. I'm there, but she's the head of it. It's unbelievable how she, uh, how she behaved. This is Orly. And then 12 years ago, I met Tehillah. Again, it started with a telephone to my show. A young girl asking me, please come and see me. I'm hospitalized in Ichilov Hospital. Please come and see me. I didn't know nothing about her. And I came and I, and I, I met a 
gorgeous young girl, very smart, but so hurt and is devastated. She was after a, a terrible, very cruel suicide. And she told me, I think it was for the, she was 18, and I think it was for her first time in life that she told anybody that she was raped by her father, by her brother, by all their friends for years. And I didn't even interview her. I just helped her. For years, I went to, to, to visit her in the psychological hospital while she was hospitalized and I brought her books. No, 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 no. No. Okay. okay. And um, uh, I helped her in, in, in any way I could, all right? Whenever she was thrown out from anywhere she was uh, uh, hospitalized in, I tried to help her to get a better place, all right? Until two years ago. Two years ago, she called me again. She needed a big help. And when I met her, it was the first time I was introduced to her identities. Tehila is a DID person. All of you know what DID is? Yes, yes. dissociative identity disorder. This, uh, uh, it's a really a terrible disorder in which the victim develops many identities who takes his uh, place when, when, when it's needed. She had 52 identities, 52. And uh, she came to me and I helped her and then she said, and actually she was thrown out of the last place she was there and she was going to be on the street. And she told me, please take me to, te to television. I want to tell the Israeli audience, the Israeli people my story. So they will understand what I have. So they will understand what is the DAD I have. So when I go to a hospital, the staff, the, the, official, uh, the staff will, uh, understand what they see, because they, 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 most of the time, they, they call me schizophrenic, they give me drugs, and this is it. I, I was afraid to take her to television. She was, so, uh, 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 she was so shaky and unstable, and how can she bear me? What will happen the day after? She will look like crazy on screen, and the day after she's on the set, how people will react. Can she imagine what this exposure means? She said, please do it, I beg you. And then we made an agreement. I did, at that time, two years ago, I did have my own show. I had to do this um, documentary to another uh, show, Amnon Levy, and I told, we made an agreement. Then we start shooting. But if it goes bad, if she feels bad, if she regrets, if she doesn't want it, we stop and we throw it away. And we do the whole documentary and we'll show her. And only if, it will, if she will say, okay, screen it, then we'll screen. If she regrets at the last minute, after we work, I don't know how much we work on it, we throw it away. She said, oh, he said, Amnon Levy said, all right, we, we do it. And we did the whole thing, and I went to Haifa at night to show her the, the, the film. She couldn't really look at it, but she did. And she said, screen it, I want it. This is just a few minutes from that story of uh, Tehillah with the 52 identities. I start talking to her. If someone, she said, she, this is she, this is Tehillah. If she feels that she wants to hurt her, one of the identities, I, I give them uh, sweets. What? They eat the sweets. Look now, look carefully. Who are you? Yeah. Who are you? Is it you, a boy? Sharon? Sharon? I know you already. Are you angry? On what? About what? That we can't be at her home. In our home. What home? We want to have home for ourselves. How old are you, Sharon? Ten and a half. Let's see. 
I'm angry at Luz. Why are you angry at Luz? I don't want her to do things she just wants. Like, like, like what? Like, like go with boys. She brings us a lot of money. But we don't want this money. Can you call Tehila, Sharon? Can you call her? Do you call her? Tehila. Do you call Tehila? Do you want to call anybody else? I want Dana to be here. So call her, okay? Hi, Dada. Is it you? How are you? How old are you? 12. Don't worry. Everything is okay. Can I call Tehila? Yes, please do. Tehila, is it you? She's back. I was in dissociation. <sighs> this uh, program, this movie, this film had a very strong effect. It was very, very effective. Tremendous effect. Uh, so many people talked about it. The main point is this film saved her life. She will tell you and I will agree with her. It saved her life. Because we were there with the camera, with everything, she got a good place. The whole movie, just I was going with her to a, a, a better place that was found for her. And sometimes when these institutions see the camera, they behave, you know, they make more effort sometimes. So we did, we got all the purposes we needed, we, we, we succeeded in, in, in getting them. And uh, well, she got motivation to leave. People started reacting to her differently. When she go to hospital, the ones who saw this film know better how to treat her now. You, they start learning what the idea is. I learned so many things. I know I have to finish, but I learned so many things. So in so many ways that the state fails in really treating those victims. But you know, uh, usually media uh, doesn't have good reputa reputation. You know, you know. Usually they say about journalists and media, they want blood, they want sensations, they want rating. Rating, I don't know. I believe in the strength I have in my hands, and I just use it. I use it. These days, I'm running. A program I called, we are before elections, and I call the new gov uh, government to build an SOS program to save those victims of uh, sexual abuse in childhood. And I believe in the media is a, a power to do good things. That's all. Thank you very much. <laughs>